All right, today we're going to be looking at Live Oaks and the T92 guys. And this is one of the only vehicles I have left that I need a lot of battle pass points on. So we've been playing it. And I noticed the 1390 is going to go west here. So I'm just going to try and take a position in the mid. T49 ends up appearing here. We're able to light him, but I am getting lit myself. And now I just have to be really careful. I like this position. I do. Um... I'll just say this, I find this position to be risky regardless of what tank you come out here in. Even if it's an even 90, because you're just in the middle of the map, guys, and you have to be really, really cautious, and you have to understand the angles that people can get on you, right? Like, there's there's people that can hit you from pretty much half of the map. Borisk, if he comes down, has shots like these people have shots underneath this bridge. There's tank destroyers here, there's tank destroyers here, there's people that are pushing, you know, into the little village part of the city i'll call it right here like i have a bat chat in front of me like there's just so much going on i'm able to take one into the bat chat and assist in cleaning that guy up and we're starting off well i haven't been hit yet but just i i really like to emphasize that to you guys like be very cautious and careful if you're going to go out here because if you get lit um Really, like, if you go out here, just don't get lit. That's really the, the, the main point. But if you do, like, you have to be really, really careful and dive down into the water and just kind of wait while you are about to drown. You know, like, go into the water, wait, like, five seconds and let the timer go down and then come back up. Like, sit all the way in the water, man, because I'm telling you, people have shots on you from everywhere. So the 103 is telling me that the batch hat is also here, which... Yeah, I could see that because the T-49 is here, but sometimes both light tanks like to come into the mid. It's possible that the Batchat was here and then ran away, um, but I have no information on that, right, on the map. Like, he hasn't been lit yet. I don't, I can't even guess it except for what the STRV is telling me. Um, anyway, we're able to spot one of the tank destroyers up here or medium or whatever that was, the Hori 1, I believe. And he gets annihilated off the map and we get like 2,000 spotting damage from it or whatever his um, HP was. And that's what makes this position so effective is that you're able to... Like, there'd be no reason to really go out here if you weren't able to counter enemy light tanks, or rather, enemy tank destroyers in this area. And even then, you're also countering enemy light tanks, too. I mean, we kind of outspotted the T-49 here. He ended up running away. And now I'm just working with my team. I'm saying, I need you guys ready to take shots on the east, because we're. it's looking like we're going to win the east, right? And they're going to have the city, which... Usually when this happens, you'll win on Live Oaks if you win the East, um, unless the city pushes really fast. But in my opinion, it's easier to push the East. For whatever reason, I feel like it's especially easier to push from this spawn because you can just push down this line right here. All the tank destroyers like to sit in here, right? And wait, this is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to start going back to my drawing again, and I, I feel like it's worth it. Um, it's been like over a month since I've done this, right? But here, this is what happens on Live Oaks, right? From this spawn. You have this kind of corridor, I guess you can call it, but the way, and it's on full screen, so just kind of bear with it for a second. But the way this map works, right? And again, it's not exactly the same. It's, you guys know how the game, how the maps work in World of Tanks in this game. Wargaming will try to mirror them as much as possible but they're not always the same. In fact, I don't think there's any map that is like exactly the same on both sides. So what happens on this map is you'll have more rookie people, I'll call it, try to push in like this, right? And this is really stupid because you have this bush right here where the tank destroyers like to sit. We'll just put tank destroyer right here. And they like to sit back in these bushes with their, you know, big freaking guns. And though, if they're smart, they can just, you know, solid bush and eliminate you because this is a really long corridor right here and you got to go down and back up again and it's just wide open. The better method, and this is how to make it work, is to just win this portion of the map right here, right? And then come down like this, like this. And then there's a bush line here, there's a bush line here, there's a bush line here, and then there's also this area, and like this whole area is where all the tank destroyers sit. So you can counter this while you're also poking up, and you can get shots if you're a good hold down tank with good gun depression. And then you can even, if you're a light tank especially, guys, you can counter um, 
from here, you can pull up into this bush line and actually outspot enemy tank destroyers that are going to sit. Actually, I think it's in this area. I was trolling in this area, but it's in this area, right? And you can actually get an angle sometimes through these trees and, and outspot them. So that's how Live Oaks works. And that's what I would encourage you guys to do all the time in your light tank. I went up right up the gut this time because I was in the mid, but always, always, always drive this way if you can see my cursor, around into this ditch and use these bushes down here. And then from there, especially if you have CVS, you'll, I'm telling you, it's easy. You will spot people even like back in this area out here. Um, and you, you just be amazed, guys, how easy Live Oaks is when you know this, right? When you know that you can make this play. And I make it all the time now. And it's easy for me to get a few thousand spotting damage right so that's what i would encourage you guys to do play it like that get into this area right and now from my perspective you can see like we have see all these little bush lines you can poke up into and now i'm trying to get more aggressive and since we've kind of won this i'll take another angle a different approach and like knock one of these trees and see if i can get a different angle on these guys so you can see i spot the tortoise here this is where i make my first mistake and I get tracked here and the engine goes. So as I'm trying to make this pass, I end up getting wrecked by multiple tanks because I wanted to, I came up a little too high, but I wanted to make an aggressive pass, but I get, the engine gets hit, right? So when the engine gets hit, you lose all your power and I wasn't able to dive back down. So it's unfortunate, but it gives the team information. We get a good amount of spotting from it. We're at 5K spotting. And this is what I mean. Look, I tell you guys all the time, the more map you can take away from the enemy team, the more likely you are you are to win the, the match, right? So we have, I'd argue, three quarters of this map. We have up to here, right? Up to They have basically A and B lines. That's it. And we have C through K. Like, we have this whole entire portion of the map. So we have the angles, right? So we have people coming wide on the zero line and wide on the one line. And that's how you work the angles, guys. It doesn't necessarily work like that on every map, but that's what you have to understand, man. It's all about angles. And the more map you can take away from the enemy team, like we are now going like this on the enemy team where the enemy team has, again, the A and B lines, two lines of this map, and we have the rest of the map, and we have these super wide, like, long angles that we can take and, and get side shots and, um, you know, you know, just like flanking shots on all of the tanks. So that's why it's so important. Like, I don't think I've ever fully explained why necessarily it's important to take map. On Live Oaks, it's really easy to describe because, like, look where our tanks are, man. The 1390 if he has the render range, can hit someone like all the way over here, right? It, again, it depends on the render range, but you see that angle compared to him poking up where I'm at, right? And the tank is right in front of him. These, some of these guys have angles going like all the way like this. And that's what's so important, guys. You, you have to win map to win angles. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to explain this, man. Like, you know, like you just have to take map, guys. So moving on here, I think we've pretty much discussed everything that I've wanted to discuss and I'm going to come up and try and hit shots into the tortoise over here the tortoise is really trollish man I'm even loading the heat constantly shooting at the cap you can see where my cursor is there and they just bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and I freaking hate these things man like I wish they would just make the cap a little easier to pen or something because even with the heat rounds it's like the angle you have on it or something and I just kept doinking off of it like constantly man even with the heat shells but we're going to eventually push in here guys and we're going to clean up this team and the t92 performed pretty well like i'm not a really big fan of the t92 and i'll, I'll actually show you why in just this particular video because i have a couple more to show you guys but this is why i don't like it the dpm is not necessarily bad but look at the damage per shot so these are all the light tanks at tier eight, I think every single light tank pretty much, except maybe there's a couple of uh, the, like those reserved tanks that you can find um, that, I forget what the heck they're called, man. But if you go like, up top here, you can find the non-tech tree tanks that have basically been like retired. But this is pretty much all the ones that I can find in the tech tree. And look at the damage per shot, man. Um, average damage so up top 
230, 240, 150 on the T92, 220, 180, 170, 240, 180, 240, 250. And this is with all the max guns. So like I made sure I configured the ones that needed to be configured. And this is why I don't like it, man, because it's... Here's the thing at a light tank, guys. There's times where you're only going to be able to take one shot, right? You want the one shot to be worth it. It's like when you're poking up into a bush, you can only take one shot and then you have to run away or something, you know? I find in light tanks, you don't need to use your DPM that often, especially if you're playing the tank the right way. And when I say the right way, I mean you're emphasizing spotting, right? So look at the DPM. And if you look at the DPM, it's actually 2117 on the T92, which isn't bad. It's actually rivaling the Hawk 30 and the Bulldog. Like LTTB, like see, like the, some of these tanks have 2000 something DPM, but I'd rather have less DPM and more alpha damage. Because again, in a light tank, you don't usually use the DPM. It's just the case, like... The, at least for me, the way I play my light tanks, I'll take one shot here and there. If I have to YOLO into somebody, yeah, I might use my DPM here and there. But usually what I'm doing is I'm just taking cleanup shots on people or I'm flanking, I'm getting the side shots. And it's like the DPM just doesn't matter because when you're hitting someone in the side, they start backing down and it's it's the damage per shot that's going to count, not the DPM. DPM, in my eyes, is better for mediums and stuff, like maybe heavies. And tank destroyers, it's kind of the same thing, right? Because a lot of times you're going to take a shot as a tank destroyer and then the person you hit is going to pull back. So the, DP, the DPM isn't really doing anything. It's the DPS. It's the damage, damage per shot, right? So that's why I don't like the T92. In the Hawk 30, because this has 240 average damage. I do like a 1400. No, I don't think it's that much. I think I average like 1260 damage in the Hawk 30. In the T92, I don't even think I average like, it's like 900 something, you know? And then look at the DPM. You'd think, oh, well, the DPM is the same. So the damage would be around the same. No, not at all. I mean, the Hawk 30 does have the nasty HE shells, but again, it's about the damage per shot, guys. It's really about the damage per shot. And this thing, when you shoot the gun, as skill was doing, it's like, like, that's what it feels like when you shoot the gun. It's like almost not even worth it to take the shot. Right. So that's the problem I have with this tank. Like it balances out because the DPM is fine, but I just hate how bad the damage per shot is. And I, I really wish even if they just went from 150 to 160 and lowered the DPM, I'd be happy with that. Like, just give me a little more alpha, man, a tier eight, like 150 is like makes me want to cry, right? Like, holy crap, guys. Like, it's just so, it's it's a miserable amount of damage per shot. Anyway, 5,600 spotting, 917 damage, guys. I'm running this with standard equipment. So CVS, optics, low noise exhaust. This is what my crew looks like. No brothers in arms or anything. So playing a game like this is very obtainable, right, guys? With just, you know, average equipment and, and even the one skill crew, you can, you can still have this game. We're top by experience. Clearly not top by damage. That's fine. And uh, that's it, guys. I mean, I will say this tank is also pretty accurate. It feels like you can do the right-click, left-click type thing with this vehicle. And I like that there's APR, APCRs um, for the standard rounds. I'm not a fan of the heats, but again, the tank is balanced. Like, the DPM is good. Everything else kind of lines up. Um, but you can see here, like, see how the aiming time, the aiming time is pretty good. The gun depression is good, but the damage per shot, man, it's just miserable. Like, I just, that's the only reason I don't like playing this thing is because of the damage per shot. And you can see down here, it checks out, man. Like, look at the LHMTV, I'm doing 1,179 damage. The Hawk 30, I'm averaging 1,263 the even 90 I'm averaging 888 but that's a little different because you guys know how the even 90 works the gun is freaking trash LT432 1205 and then the T92 I'm, I'm under a thousand damage right so it all checks out but it's just like I'd much rather play in the Hawk 30 because look at the average damage difference right and it's just I just feel like I'm doing more when I play in a vehicle like this so that's all, guys. I hope you enjoyed. hope it helps you on Live Oaks. I know this is a pretty long video, so I'm going to let you guys go. But thanks for watching. I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.